crafty friends Nina here thanks for joining me today so I can show you how I created more pages of my art by Merlin mini 4x4 album remember this is these are the pages that I created before I had two videos with these I'm gonna link them down below and in the top right corner so you can check them if you didn't yet so to start off today I did cut from white paper solar white papers four by four uh, papers and I'm gonna start by making the background I am going to use these four colors to make the first background by just smushing the ink pads on my glass mat. I'm using four colors here. I'm gonna link them down below so you can know which colors I used. Um, also, all the materials and tools that I'm going to use today are going to be linked down below if you wanna check them. Check them. So I am using these purple and blue colors and then I'm going to spray some water and I'm going to smush my background against these colors. I did not mix the colors or anything, so each little area will have a different color, but all the colors are matching together. Look how beautiful the result is. Very nice. Then I'm gonna come with this Dilution inks. It has a pearly look to it, and I am just going to smoosh it again. Look how pearly it is becoming. You're gonna see it at the end when it is dry. Then for the second one, I'm going to have four pages. For the second one, I want to create a ground and a sky. So I'm going to smoosh green and yellow at the bottom and blues at the top. And I'm not going to move my paper. I'm going to place it just exactly like this, a bright position. So it, stayed blue, it stays blue on top, representing the sky and the grass, green grass at the bottom. And I'm going to keep smooshing it, but in the upright position so it stays like this. And then I'm going to um, press my uh, uh, ink pads against my glass mat. And then I'm going to dilute it with water. And I'm going to make these cute splashes, picking my brush against all the pages. I'm going to do the same thing for all the backgrounds. And this is it by then. Look at the pearly look to this one. And this is the blue different colors. And this is the one with the sky in the ground. And look at these orange ones. These are the papers. They are cut out from different books from Art by Merlin. So I'm doing this part while recording my uh, voice because it's going to be very difficult to explain this with the voice over. Here I'm going to show you how I choose the background for the pieces that I want to work with. So first of all, I do have this color wheel. It is very helpful. I'm going to link it down below if you want to check it. Also, all the materials and the tools that I'm going to use today are going to be linked down below. So how to use this is the color that you have, you're going to point it to this arrow. And then I'm going to show you how to choose a matching color for it. So, for example, let's start with this. Here, I want I did collect all the pieces that I want to use from the booklets of uh, die cuts uh, from Art by Merlin collections. Different collections, not specific one. So let's start with this one. This one has mostly red colors. So you are going to point the arrow to the red color over here. So ours is red. So I'm going to point the arrow to the red. And then we have different ways to choose what color matches with the color that I have. So I can choose its complementary color, just simply a green, red with green. Let me show you red with green how it's gonna look like look it's complementing it showing it and they're popping against each other so this is if we use green you can also use this is its complementary color or you can use the split complementary so it's the yellow green with the blue green so red yellow green and blue green or the trail so you're going to use the red and the yellow and the blue. So either one of these, either the yellow and the blue. If you're coloring them like over here, what they did was they used the red colors and they used the yellows and the green and the blue. So they used this collection. So this is, look how the colors are popping and they're so bright and beautiful together because they're following this method. So over here, so over here, I'm just choosing one color, which is going to be the background. 
So I only need one color. So if I use the trail, so I'm going to read with the red, I'm going to use either blue or yellow. If I'm going to use the complementary, I'm going to be using just green. Over here, I'm going to be using the greenish blue um, background. So look how it will look when I add them together. Especially that it has white parts with the white surrounding my image. It just looks beautiful. You can also try the yellow. That as it says over here, you can also try the yellowish. And when you're choosing a color, if you have a bright red, I recommend that you, for the background you use bright from the same circle. And if you're using less toned or less muted red, also use a less toned if it's a faint of red. So this is not showing the degree, the, um, the shades of each color this wheel has, does. So over here, let's see. So this is a green, this is a yellow, this is a very bright yellow, and this is less muted. So if you're using this kind of yellow, I would suggest that with it, you go for a bright red. If you're using, for example, this shade, the second shade from the center, also use the second shade from the center. That makes it look nicer. So let's go to the second image. So for this, I'm going to use the greenish blue from my collection here. So I'm going to go in this area. So against the red is green. So I'm going to go with greenish blue. Okay, so this is for one image. The second one is that's this car. I want to use this car and I want to use these ice cream, ice cream cones coming out of it. And so let's see what colors we need to use with this. So if this is pink, so it's, a, it's like between here and here. It's like pinkish, uh, violet, red, pink. And so I'm going to put my arrow here, almost in the middle. So what you can go with is something greenish, yellow, bluish in this area. This is the complementary of it. So I did create this. So of course I had these things, uh, these cutouts uh, outside ready for me before I started making the backgrounds because I wanted to make the backgrounds for them. So I had these out. I chose the images that I want and then I started creating the backgrounds for them. So since it is going to be a car, I wanted to ground it and make a sky as well. So that's why I cut these into two parts. I did make it green on the bottom and blue on the top. So, and this is the suggestion that the color wheel is showing me, the bluish green. So I did put the green over here for the car to be on. And then I'm going to use these ice cream sticks and I'm going to bring them here. Look how beautiful the colors are together. So, and then for this one, and then for this, I want to put these together. They are yellow color. So let's see, let's point our arrow on the yellow over here. We're going to put it over here and its complementary color is violet. Violet, red violet, blue violet. These are the complementary. Or you can go to the extreme with the trail. But I chose violet. It will really pop. Look how I chose this one. Look how beautiful they are together really complementing each other. Then comes the problem with this last one. These two images, I want to put them as if they're hanging from the top. They are blue. What color matches with the blue? Let's say I'm going to put the arrow on the blue over here. And what matches here is the orange yellow. So the best to use over here is the yellow. Look how amazing and popping they are. Amazing. But the problem is this is an underwater scene. This is a these these this is an under these are and creating an underwater scene. So I actually need to put them on something blue. Look, it's lost. It's totally lost. So what I have in mind now, let's see how it goes. But what I have in mind now that maybe I will uh, outline the blue part with the dark, uh, thick black marker. 
so they show against each other. I'm also going to raise it with the um, foam tape. So it's going to create a shadow around it like this. So it is going to show, I hope. So let's see, maybe I'll change my mind in the middle of working and then I'm going to use this. Because they look amazing here. Look at the difference. It's totally lost over here. Let's see, we'll find a way. Let's see how it goes. So this is the part that I wanted to show you how to use your color wheel to choose the back, the perfect background for your images. So from now we are going to go, I'm going to go back to the voiceover and I'm going to work again now to uh, decorate my uh, background with more stamping. So we're back here to the voiceover to decorate the backgrounds more. I am going to use this different stencil from Art by Merlin, Art by Merlin and this pearlescent looking uh, pearly um, white pearl modeling paste. I'm going to use it and I'm going to take a little bit by a little bit on my uh, um, applicator and I'm going to lightly press against the stencil to add these little uh, details on the background. I am not going to press all the way and I'm not going to uh, fill all the holes. I just want it to look like sketchy and not uniform. Look how beautiful it is. And it has this pearly look to it. Look, it's a pearly texture. Look how beautiful you have the texture. And uh, really, I'm trying to catch it in the light. It's not really showing. And this is the underwater scene. And I am going to create these circles as if they're bubbles under the water. It's going to make a beautiful effect. Look how very light I am pressing. And I am not pressing uh, uniformly. I'm not remaking the whole pattern of the stencil. I'm just leaving it sketchy. Uh, some of the circles are recreated and some are not. And some just only half of them is recreated. I'm just taking my time to choose the perfect placement I want and the best part of the stencil that matches with my scene. So I'm going to keep doing this on all the pages. I'm going to use different stencils here and there to knowing, keeping uh, the image that I'm going to use on top in mind. So I know which parts are going to be covered with the image and which parts are not. Look how beautiful the pearly texture is. So I am going to do the same thing for uh, this purple one. I know that there will be a lamp standing over here. So on the other side, I'm going to fill this so it does not interfere with the lamp. This is the other part where the lamp is not going to be. So I'm filling this empty area with this beautiful texture of the stencils from Art by Merlin. I'm going to also link these stencils down below. Look how beautiful the texture is. Just before you continue or stamp anything on top, just make sure that this is totally dried so you do not mess up your pattern. So we're just going to create the background today. And for the part two, I'm going to show you how I prepare my focal points and how I add them and add the sentiments to the background so we can finish uh, all the four pages. Stay tuned for part two. I'm so excited to show it to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!